Palm Sunday. The motion of this moment actually begun so long before. In fact, if you look back to the book of Genesis, we see that God had set creation into motion and he looked at it, he said it was good. But then there was a moment where humanity experienced a fall. Humanity experienced the tear and the brokenness of sin. And what's so significant about Palm Sunday is in the midst of our brokenness, God set his plan into motion. In fact, John would write later on in the book of Revelation that before the foundations of the world, the lamb, speaking of Jesus, was slain. God's plan and God's purpose was to take our brokenness, meet our brokenness, and begin to rebuild and redeem and restore all things. And friends, that's why we celebrate Palm Sunday. That's the thread woven throughout humanity. That Jesus is the rescuer. Jesus is the redeemer. And the good news is, is that he pursued us. He pursued us. In fact, in Matthew's gospel, he writes these words in Matthew chapter 21. It says that as Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. And Jesus, he sent ahead of him two disciples. And he gave them these instructions. Go into the village over there, he said. And as soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone asks what you're doing, just say, the Lord needs them. The Lord needs them. See, from the fall, God set this plan into motion that he made a covenant with Abraham and said, Abraham, through you, all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. And Abraham's family grew. It became the people, the nation of Israel. And Israel looked forward to the day that their Messiah would come. And Jesus now is setting into motion. He's declaring openly what was prophesied in Zechariah that the Messiah, the king, would come riding into Jerusalem on a donkey to bring freedom. All these years later, Jesus sends the disciples and says, go, and this is how you're going to find it. Now, this works in Jerusalem. It won't work if you try to do this with somebody's car this afternoon, right? <laughs> it won't work if you say, the Lord has need of that. that. That won't work. But Jesus, what is he doing? He's publicly declaring what his ministry has been working towards now for three years. The scripture continues. It says, this took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. Can I tell you those words are significant? Your king is coming to you. He's humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt. And he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him. And others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And Jesus was in the center of this procession. All the people around him were crying out and shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. The word in the original Greek is Hosanna. Can you say Hosanna? Hosanna. Hosanna. That word literally means, Lord, save now. And again, this is significant because this is the Passover feast. The, uh, the people in Jerusalem, scholars believe now there's about 2 million people in and around the area of Jerusalem gathered to celebrate Passover. And they're crying out as they see Jesus, the one who's done the miracles, the one who has opened the eyes of the blind, the one who has allowed deaf to hear, the one who has fed the masses. That same Jesus is entering Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. People see him as a king who's coming to them. Verse 10, it says, when the entire city of Jerusalem was in, a, in an uproar as he entered, and they declared, who is this? Who is this? They asked. And the crowds replied, it's Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. 
See, the reality, friends, what the crowd simply saw as a prophet was so much more than a prophet. Their king had come to them. And you see, this is what Palm Sunday reminds us of. Our king, Jesus, has come to us. Jesus is the king who came to us. So many people, when they think about the idea of God, they get this picture of religion. But listen, religion is man's attempt to work their way to God. Christianity is a declaration that God made his way to us. That on Palm Sunday, the plan that he had set in motion all those years before in the book of Genesis was now coming to fulfillment. That plan to meet our brokenness and meet our fracture and meet our flaw. He is the thread that is going to begin to knit our lives back together. Jesus is the king that came to us. And yet for many, this story just remains simply that, a story. The key is to allow this story to begin to transform your life. In other words, to allow that thread to begin to touch the tapestry of who you are. See, I know in my own life, I I grew up in the church and this story, I I grew up around this story. I, I grew up in this story. And yet I remember a specific moment where it was no longer a story, it became reality to me. Everything changed. See, even though I knew glimpses of this good news, I had thought that somehow I had to work to get myself to a place where God would notice me, that God would love me, that God would forgive me. But you see, the fact that Jesus all these years ago entered into Jerusalem, he was the king who came to us. He's already come for you. He's made a way. That's why we celebrate, friends. Because if he didn't enter Jerusalem, there's no Last Supper. There's no cross. There's no empty tomb. And if that's the case, then we are all without hope. But because all these years ago, he entered into that city and he entered into that city. He set into motion a few significant things. You see, he entered into that city with intentionality. His move towards Jerusalem was intentional the fulfillment of the prophecy with riding on a donkey, the fact that the Passover feast is taking place and the Jews were gathered together to remember their God who had set them free from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. Everything about this, Jesus is making a public declaration. I am king. It was intentional. Not only was it intentional though, it was willing. Jesus knew what was waiting for him. Listen, some of us, if we know that trouble's waiting for us, we will do everything we can to avoid walking down that path. But the good news is our king was willing. In fact, Jesus himself said in John chapter 10 that nobody takes his life from him, but that he willingly lays it down. Think about that motion. He was willing. Not only was that motion intentional and powerful, but intentional and willing, but it was also powerful. It was powerful. As they're there celebrating the feast of Passover, they're remembering all those years ago when they were in bondage, when they were in slavery in Egypt. And God made a commandment to the people that if they would sacrifice a lamb and apply the blood of the lamb to the doorpost of their home, God's wrath would pass over them. And here living in front of them is a greater Passover lamb. The one whose blood will be shed. It's a powerful declaration that anybody who would trust in the work that Jesus did, trusting in his blood to cover their sin, that God's wrath would pass over them. Friends, it's powerful, this motion. And on that note, it's important to remember that this motion was costly. God's love was set into motion. And he loved you and I so much that he didn't just love us with words. As he clothed himself in humanity, he was willing to allow himself in just a matter of days to become our sacrifice, to become our substitute. It's costly. Friends, he paid the ultimate price. And here's where this leads us to. I want to draw our attention back to a question that was asked in verse 10 of Matthew chapter 21, 
It says this, the entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. By the way, that word uproar is where we get our word seismic. In other words, as Jesus is entering, it's shaking the city. People are taking note. And it leads them to ask this question, who is this? Friends, that's a question that each of us will answer. And how you answer it changes everything. Because for some of us, we've answered, well, this is the person in the story. This is somebody that I revisit once a year. But can I tell you that the thread of God's grace, his love set into motion all those years ago today, he desires to connect with you, begin to redeem, rebuild, restore those areas of your life that have been broken. It's why he came. Jesus is the king who came to us. Today, can I invite you to bow your head just for a moment? I want to take a second for us to reflect and respond, and whether you're in this room or you're watching online today. Today, if you want that reality to become your reality, today you desire to make that decision to put your trust in the work that Jesus has done for you. You want to know that your sin is forgiven. You want to know that you have a fresh start. If that's you today, can I tell you, it's not about you working your way to God. It's about understanding and embracing the truth that your king came to you. He came for you. He loves you. Today, if you want to receive that love, can I invite you to just just simply raise a hand, just hold it up for a moment and say, today, God, I receive your love. I receive your love. I put my trust in the work that you've done for me. I want to know that my sin is forgiven. I want to know that I'm a new creation all across this room. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can we pray this prayer out loud together? Can we all repeat this together? Say, Father God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus for me. I put my trust in the work that you've done for me. Forgive me of my sin. Make me a new creation. And help me to follow you every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we celebrate all those who made that decision today?